I'm here at Stanford University at Memorial Auditorium where Bill Gates is going to be giving a speech on um, software innovation and philanthropy and other topics in his uh, almost new job as technology visionary in chief, which uh, I believe he's about to be installed as in the tech industry. And here's a lot of students sort of gathering around. And it's a very lovely campus, Stanford. There's a fountain over there through the trees. They don't call this place a country club for nothing. And so let's go. Dude, wasn't that the craziest rip you've ever heard? taking over a lot of things I've been doing, and I'll still uh, be very involved in some things that I've had a lot of passion about, including uh, natural user interface, uh, some things about how we structure knowledge, and really uh, take on the big frontiers of software. Let me talk now about what I think software will do in the decades ahead. Certainly, if you go back uh, to the start of Microsoft, nobody thought of software as, as being important at all. Uh, there was no software industry. The little software that there was was simply bundled along with the mainframes of the very expensive computers. And computing itself was almost thought of as a threatening, scary thing where governments and large companies would use it uh, to track information about you and to print bills that were never right. Uh, people talked about stapling the punch card that came with your bill ever heard of a punch card, uh, and messing up these, you know, uh, these evil computers, cars and planes, or any physical product, do the design digitally, share those plans around, let people try out the simulation models, what might happen with that product over a period of time. You're shortening design cycles. And so you take the fact that there are more educated people on a global basis, that they're connected, and that the power of software will give them better tools, not just to work together, but also to model and understand the, the nature of the prop work they're doing, uh, then innovation will accelerate. And it will accelerate on this foundation of the advances in, in computing and software. You interact with all these devices. It's been the mouse and keyboard overwhelmingly. Uh, it was just the keyboard, but then uh, the mouse became mainstream, actually invented uh, not far from here in the 60s by uh, Doug Engelbart. But then, with graphics interface, that came in at the standard. That is the way we interact. You sit down in a chair, it's really just one person. You're starting to see the beginnings of, that, of a change to a broad range of interaction techniques I call natural user interface. Uh, you see it in the 3D controller that the Wii has. You see it in the touch that the iPhone has. You see it in products like Microsoft Surface, where we have cameras that can look at any gesture, any object, that's appearing and see what you're doing. You see it in round table that sees who's in the room and decides what's speaking by taking these multiple camera feeds. You see it in products like the, the Tell Me software that runs in mobile phones where instead of trying to use that keyboard, you simply say what you're interested in, whether it's a directory lookup or a software interaction, and it recognizes that speech. And we now have the power to perform natural user interface and they exchange them, and being able to go back and view that in rich and fun ways. That should happen very automatically. Today, we're still very device-centric, and we rely on the user to move information between their phones, and their phones and their PCs, and their PCs and their PCs. Well, as we get this sort of unlimited power in the cloud, both in terms of computation and storage, the ability to move that data automatically so that if you buy a new phone, your information just shows up. If you borrow a PC, your data is there but only available to you. That would become commonplace. And so the willingness to work with multiple form factors, even in the car uh, where it's more voice oriented or in the living room where it's more distance, 10 foot oriented with gestures and a, a simple remote control or using your phone to control things, those experiences will not be bifurcated like they are today. And we also need to revolutionize how we write software, where we can define things at a much higher level. Uh, 
That really hasn't changed much in these last 30 years. We're still writing declarative code that can take something like two banks whose products are 90% identical, and you can end up literally with a million lines of code that are different between these two banks. And yet, if you describe, say, in English, their products, you'd only find like 40 pages of difference. And so you say, what is that explosion of complexity that is expensive, it's fragile, it's hard to prove it's correct? Well, it's a failure of abstraction. We have not changed that level of abstraction. And finally, we have the computing power and uh, some of these ideas that can create runtime environments, but particularly in domains that you focus on, like the business domain that so much software is written to, we can make some huge breakthroughs. A high percentage of people that the relative benefit has been overwhelmingly to essentially the people who need it the left, the least, where the marginal benefit is, is lower than it is, say, in the poorest two billion, where literally, for not spending a few hundred dollars, a child's life is lost. Of the 12 million children that die every year, universities have a big role to play here. One element of it is that I don't think students should graduate without having some sense, ideally uh, both learning about it and having some direct experience of it, of the average human condition in the world, as opposed to the condition that we experience normally uh, by uh, living here in, in one of the very uh, richest countries in the world. So I think we can apply ourselves to this. I don't think it requires a revolution, but it does require a focus. It requires uh, some uh, value system that gets expressed and some measurement, both in terms of who's, who's doing it well and who's not doing it well, that's really going to drive more rapid change. So overall, I hope you get a sense of my optimism about uh, how technology broadly and software in particular will become an enabling element in the years ahead. And I think it's a wonderful time uh, to be a student and to have gathered these skills. And so I'll be very excited to see the, the great work that you can do. Thank you.